Tom's Midnight Garden, side three. Patty, Patty, wake up! You fell from the treehouse! The blood on your head! Abel's coming, he'll help! Miss Patty! Come on, up you come. Patty, it's all right. It's all right. Get you gone! What? Get you back to hell where you come from! I didn't know you could see me! I see you always! I thought best not to see you! And heard you, and thought best to seem dead, but I know you for what you are. Oh, Abel, is Hattie alive or is she dead? Ah, <laughs> oh, you try to kill her often enough. Her oh, that had neither mother nor father nor home here. Nothing but her innocence against your devilry, your bulls and arrows and knives and high places. Now get you gone! May the Lord keep me from all the works of the devil that he hurt me on. Susan, it's Miss Hattie. she be hurt bad. Oh, let me in, Abel! Open the door, it's my only way home! Abel! Archie! Abel! Please, let me in! Oh, I'm too tired, I can't push through! Oh, please! Master James is fetching the doctor. You best go now, Abel, for the mistress stays indoors in your boot. Take care of her, Susan. Wait! Abel, please, how is Hattie? Wait! Abel, please, Abel, she's not dead, is she? She's not dead! No, she's alive. Oh, Hattie's alive. And Abel hasn't quite shut the door. But, oh, Peter, the hall has all its old furniture again. The old stuff isn't fading away like it did before. It's staying. I'm in Hattie's house, but I don't know where Hattie is. I keep thinking she must be a ghost. I can't see any other explanation. And people have to die. They have to die before they become ghosts. Is this how Hattie died? Falling from our treehouse? If I go upstairs, perhaps I'll find her. Perhaps she's all right after all. Hattie? Hattie? someone coming. What if he can see me too? No, he can't. Mother? Who is that? It's James. James? But he's a grown-up. You can come in. I'm only brushing my hair. Uh, how's Hattie? Hattie will do well enough. Is that what the doctor said? Yes. Well, we must be thankful then. Thankful? But what was she doing to have that accident? Climbing trees, if you please. Has she no sense of what is fitting to her sex? And to her age now? She's old enough to know better. Hattie is young for her age. Oh. Perhaps it comes from her being by herself so much, playing alone in the garden. Oh, you were always kind to her. And so is Hattie never to grow up? Is that it? Pass me my hairpins. Of course Hattie will grow up. Good for you, James. But I think we should begin to consider what is to become of her then. She is not to expect anything more from me, surely. I've given her charity enough. Well, in that case, Mother, she will have to earn her own living. Although how she is to do that, I don't know. Or perhaps she will marry. Although, again, I don't know how. She knows no one and meets no one outside this house and garden. I will not have her ruling here when I'm gone. What do you mean, Mother? If you or Hubert or Edgar should ever think of marrying Harriet... Do not expect to have a penny from me. Well, Hubert has never cared for the girl, and I believe Edgar dislikes her. But you have pitied her. Go on, James. Say you'll marry Hattie. Mother, I have no intention of marrying Hattie. But I do believe she is to be pitied. She is pitiable, certainly. Well, surely now she is growing up, she should meet more people. Oh, you know perfectly well she loves only to be alone in the garden. We must make her want more. She must not be allowed any longer to hide away from our friends when they call. When we make up parties, we must encourage her to join in. Boating, picnics, whist drives, skating in winter. Huh. I'll go to her now and tell her that when she is well again, we all want her to go out more and make friends. We all? Or may I say that you wish it, Mother? Oh, you may say what you like to her. 
You may do what you like with her, and the less I see of her, the better. Thank you, Mother. Tom! Oh, it's so nice that you're here. I've never seen you outside the garden before. I wanted to know you are all right, but I thought I ought to wait on the landing until James had finished talking to you. You could have come in. He would never have known. James has grown up. You're older too. I didn't notice it happening. What? Uh, nothing. How are you? Very well. I just have to keep this bandage on for a few days, but the doctor says the scar on my forehead won't show. And Cousin James says I must do other things besides falling out of trees in the future. Things without me? Oh, no, Tom. Whenever you want to come, so you shall. Come on. Sit on the bed and talk to me. This is a big room, isn't it? But you've got bars across the bottom of your windows, as if it were a nursery. They look familiar. This was my cousin's nursery when they were little, and after that, my nursery. And then because I was the last child, it stayed my bedroom. You have two windows. Where is the bathroom in this house? Bathroom? Well, where do you have your bath? In here, of course. Just as the boys do in their bedroom. Here? How? The tin bath is brought in. And Susan carries cans of hot water up from the kitchen. In winter, my fire is lit, and I have my bath beside it. You could make a proper bathroom here. You could run a partition somewhere down the middle of this room, here, so there'd be a window on either side. Then this part could still be my... A bedroom, and the room on the other side could be a bathroom. Well, that's a stupid idea. This would only be a slice of a room then. Yes, and the partition will be... would be thin, and you'd be able to hear if anyone had a bath next door. Oh, I'd never want to hear that. I don't suppose you ever will. Other people may. I like your room better. And I like your view better. Better than what? Better... Better than if there were nothing but houses opposite. <laughs> Don't be silly, Tom. Why would there be houses out there? I wish there was still this room and this view. I don't understand you. Oh, Tom, don't sound so sad. Uh, Hattie, what does the picture on the grandfather clock mean? The angel reading the book? Um, something from the Bible. It's difficult to understand, so I can't remember it exactly. I'll find out if you want to know. Oh, yes, please. Who will you ask? I shall ask the clock. It's written there. I've never seen it. No, you can't. It's written so low down on the clock face that it's hidden by the edge of the dial door. First, you have to unlock the pendulum case. Inside there is a catch. You release that and the door that covers the clock face opens. Then you can see the words. Now who keeps the key to the pendulum case? The grandfather clock keeps it. The key is always in the keyhole. But anyone might unlock it. Only aunt needs to, to wind it. She's forbidden anyone else to touch it. The key isn't there now. I mean, I can't unlock it. Next time I'm downstairs, if there's nobody about, I'll open the dial door, and then you can read the secret for yourself. Thank you. I'll show you a secret now. Come here, now. Look up there, between the window and the shutter. Do you see? It looks like bits of black cloth. What is it? Bats. They sleep there in the daytime and fly out into the garden at night. Once, one flew into my room by mistake. What did you do? I screamed and screamed. Susan had told me bats get caught in your hair and then all your hair has to be cut off to get rid of them. I don't think that's true. No, but I believed it then. Susan had to come in and chase it out for me. Mice come in too, especially in the autumn after the harvest. I can hear them running races behind the skirting boards. And I'll show you something else. In here. Your clothes? No. My special place under this floorboard. It's never been nailed down, so it's really easy to lift up. It's been my secret hiding place since I was a child. Uh, I remember your little pen knife. The one Abel gave me. And here's my paint box, and this is where I keep picture. Who are those people? They were my mother and father, long ago. You remember, Tom, I once used to pretend they were a king and queen. <laughs> That'll be Susan. I'd better get back into bed. Now, Miss Hattie, it's time for you to sleep. 
I've come to take your lamp. Thank you, Susan. Will you leave the door a little open? I'd like to see the light from the hall. Yes, I will. Good night, Miss Hattie. I'd better go too. Very well. I'll see you tomorrow. You always say that. And then you don't come again for ages. I come every night. You don't? There are often months and months between your visits. Never mind. Good night, Tom. Good night, Hattie. I will come tomorrow. Peter, I wish you were here. I can't get back. I keep going out in the garden and then coming in again. But the old furniture won't fade away. It's quite solid. The house is still Hattie's house. I can't get back into Aunt Gwen and Uncle Anne's flat. What will I do? I'll go back to Hattie's room. Uh, my room. Hattie. I don't want to give you a fright. I'll just sit here by the bed. And as soon as you wake up, I'll ask if you know what to do. to sleep in Hattie's room, but I've woken up in mine. How does it work? Oh, I was right about the room. The window's the same. The door's the same. This was Hattie's room. Well, half of Hattie's room. The other half is the bathroom. My slipper. What if they find the flat door wedged with my slipper? Nothing, Aunt Gwen. I was, um, just, uh... You want the bathroom, don't you? Yes, yes. Uncle Alan won't be long. He's always ready for breakfast by half past seven. Can you wait? Shall I get him to hug? Uh, no, no, I'm all right. Thank you. Not much post this morning. Just one letter for you and one for Tom. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> Look, Tom, mine is from your mother. And yours is from Peter. Thank you. Dear Tom, beware. Mother is writing to Aunt Gwen to say you can come home at the end of the week. And this time, you really are to. I think Mother will say you must come, because I miss you. But I don't want you to come away. I like all you write in your letters. Tell me some more. I wish I was there, but Mother and Father say no. I wish we had more trees and a river near. I wish I was there. Yours, Pete. <sighs> well, Tom, so we must really say goodbye to you soon. When? There's a cheap train on Saturday morning. Your mother says you can go by train now you're out of quarantine. Next Saturday? That's only four days away. <clears throat> I wish I'll miss you, Tom. Your father and mother send their special love, Tom, and they look forward to seeing you again soon. Your mother says Peter's been missing you very much. We could hardly expect to keep you longer unless we adopted you. <laughs> I do want to see them all again. But if you did adopt me... I was only joking, Tom. Perhaps next year you'll come again and spend part of your summer holiday with us. That's a long time away. Every one of your ticks brings Saturday nearer. How am I going to have time to do everything I want to do in the garden in just four nights? You're the link. You know the secret of time and the garden. And tonight, after you strike 13, Hattie will open your door for me and I'll know the secret too. <laughs> what are you doing down there, Tom? You know you mustn't touch Mrs Bartholomew's clock. I, I was just a bit bored. Uh, can we go and see the river? Oh, yes. Now that you're out of quarantine, we can. It's very 
built up along there, but if we go to the bridge, we can see it. I'm sure I can find the way. Here's your river, Tom. It doesn't run through fields then. Not this much, I'm afraid, no. What's that notice? These waters have been certified as unsuitable for fishing and bathing owing to pollution. Dreadful stuff gets into rivers these days, I believe. No so. And can't you bathe or paddle anywhere? There's bathing at Castleford. This river flows down to Castleford, you know? To Castleford, Ely Kings live in the sea. Yes. Tom, how did you know that bit of geography? Uh, someone told me. Uh, what is the time, please? Four o'clock. Is that all? Oh, dear Peter, today is going so slowly. I want it to be tonight. Tonight, Hattie is going to show me the secret of the clock. Snow! Footprints. I think they're going to the pond. Though I do not dare let go of the chair yet. Hattie, you remember you said... you're thinner. No, I'm fatter, Aunt Gwen Wade. No, I didn't mean that. I meant thinner through. <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't know what I meant. It doesn't matter. Hattie, you promised to find out for me about the writing on the grandfather clock. Did I? When you fell from our treehouse. You promised? Oh, <laughs> why, that was long ago. You waited until now, Tom. Couldn't you wait a little longer? You can watch me skate. Uh, Hattie, you must keep your promise. Oh, very well. But it means I must take off my skating boots and put on my shoes. Oh, my skating is improving so much. As soon as I can skate without holding on to the chair, I'll be able to skate on the river ice with the others. Hubert and James and Edgar and the Chapman girls and young Barty. Have you never learnt to skate, Tom? Yes, I can skate. Are you ready? Oh, come along, then. I'll show you the clock. Oh. Aunt will be upstairs. If I'm quick, she'll never know. On the pendulum, it says time no longer. Yes, that's it. Ah, here's the catch. Yes, but no longer than what? You don't understand. Wait. There. Now you can see. Under the feet of the angel with his book. I thought it was the book of Revelation, but I couldn't remember the chapter or verse. Rev 10, 1 to 6. Shh. Wasn't that a movement upstairs? Come on. Let's go outside again. Uh, Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. I ought to get my Bible and look it up for you, but it's upstairs. Well, what about Abel's Bible in the heating house? Oh, yes. Come along. Leave the door open, Tom, to let in the light. There's the Bible. <laughs> Evil still keeps us on top of the other books. <coughs> oh, Hattie, you're taller. You couldn't reach it before. Let's see. Epistle to James. First of Peter. Second of Peter. First of John. Second of John. Jude. Revelation! Revelation is the last book of the Bible. Miss Hattie? Abel! Oh, Abel, do you mind? We, I mean, of course, I wanted to look something up in your Bible. I'm very sorry if you object. I'll put the book back, of course. No. No. For there's truth in that book and salvation. Them that reads in that book, they cannot be altogether damned. Abel, I hope you don't think I'm damned. I wasn't speaking to you, Miss Hattie. I'll leave you to it.
He can be a bit strange sometimes. Still, he doesn't seem to mind. Good. Here it is. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open. That's the angel on the clock. Yes. Listen. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So he sealed up the secret. Be patient, Tom. It goes on. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created heaven, that there should be time no longer. I don't understand. It's difficult. The book of Revelation is full of angels and beasts and strange sayings. I don't think anyone knows for certain what it all means. But the last bit, time no longer, what does that mean? I'm not really sure. I must know. It's important. It's on the pendulum of the clock. And the angel swore it. He swore there should be time no longer. What did he mean? Perhaps when the last trump sounds. Oh, let's go to the pond. I can see Abel sweeping the ice for me. Come and watch me skate. I almost understand. And then it slips away. I need to think. I have to work it out. Dear Peter, I've been thinking about time. The angel on the grandfather clock says, time no longer. But if time is ever to end, that means that here and now, time is only a temporary thing. That's why it can change in the garden, always being the past, but not always the same bit of the past. So I thought, perhaps I might be able to dodge behind time's back and have the past, which is at his present, all the time as well as having my here and now. But to do that, I have to understand how time works. Tom! Breakfast is ready. Aunt Gwen, what is time? Half past seven, Tom. There are your eggs, Alan. Yeah. And yours, Tom, dear? No, I mean, what is time? How does time work? Oh, no. Time. <clears throat> there is no one answer to that question, although there are, of course, many theories which I could explain to you. I've heard a theory. <clears throat> what? Yeah, what theory? That in the end, there will be time no longer. I don't believe I know that one. An angel said it. An angel? What on earth have angels to do with scientific theories? Well, um... Hello. Can't have conversations like this at breakfast time. <clears throat> I wish you wouldn't. I didn't know he felt like that about angels. Your uncle is as reverent as anyone about angels in their proper place, but his nerves are always a little edgy early in the morning. Mm. So easy to make him lose his temper. Then he leaves his breakfast. It all leads to indigestion. I'm sorry. Alan, please don't be angry. That boy deliberately provokes me. He doesn't mean to. Do come back and reassure him. <sighs> Very well. Tom, I apologise. Come and finish your breakfast, Alan. No, I should like to explain to Tom. Now, Tom, <clears throat> you see, it was once thought that time flowed on as a never-ending stream without relation to anything else. Hmm? But... If you will look at this diagram, Tom, you will see that modern theories of time are more complex than that. I don't understand. I don't understand. See the position in time of point A, hmm? Or, for instance, think of Rip Van Winkle. 
Rip Van Winkle fell asleep in an enchanted place on a mountainside. He thought he'd slept for one night, but when he returned to his family, he found that 20 years had gone by. Yes, yes, Rip Van Winkle isn't very illuminating. Now, <clears throat> let's think of Einstein's theory of relativity. I like Rip Van, Van Winkle in reverse. Instead of going forward, I go back to Hattie's time. But not always to the same time, nor in the proper order. The fir tree was standing, fallen, then standing again. Hattie's been my age and younger and older. My visits have covered about ten years, but only a few weeks of my own time have passed. How fast and in what direction? Is it that different people have different times, though they're really all bits of the same big time? Well, one could say more accurately that... I might be able to step back into someone else's time in the past, or she might be able to step forward into my time, which would seem like the future to her, though to me it's the present. No, it would be clearer, Tom, to go back to point A... And she would know be a ghost from the past than I would be a ghost from the future. We're neither of us ghosts, nor is the garden. What are you talking about, ghosts? Gardens? Suppose someone really had stepped out of one time into another. That would be proof. Proof? <sighs> I have been able to explain very little if you have not understood the, the, the proof in, in matters of time. I'm sure that's all been proof. a very helpful answer to Tom's question, <laughs> hasn't it, Tom, dear? What? Oh, yes. Thank you, Uncle Alan. Hattie tried to explain about the words on the clock, and Uncle Alan tried to explain time to me, but I still don't really understand. When I go into the garden tonight, I don't know if I'll be in the same bit of Hattie's time, or a different bit. And if it's a different bit, I don't know if it'll be an earlier bit, or a later bit. Time no longer. still winter, but is this the same winter? <laughs> the river's frozen. Skaters! Hattie! 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 Hattie? Hattie, it's Tom! What's the matter? Can't, can't you see me anymore? Hattie! Hattie! across the meadow. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Oh, they've made a gate in the hedge. That's new. That was done a long time ago. Oh, Tom, I am so glad to see you. I miss you sometimes, even now. In spite of the Chapman girls being good fun, and Barty and the others. In spite of the skating. Oh, Tom, skating. I feel as if I could go from here to the end of the world. If all the world were ice. I feel as free as a bird. Oh. Why haven't you any skates? Yes, why haven't I? Yeah, Hattie, listen. Where do you keep your skates when you're not using them? In the boot cupboard in the hall. Oh, that cupboard's not there anymore. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, not now. Uh, never mind. Hattie, will you promise me something? What is it? You have to promise before I tell you. Well, I can't if it's wrong or dangerous. It isn't either. But you must promise first. Because when I tell you what it is... You may think it's silly. And it isn't, really, it isn't. No, Tom. You must tell me first. Right then. I want you to keep your skates, always, when you're not using them, in that secret place you showed me. You remember? In your bedroom cupboard under the floorboards. There? <laughs> but that is silly. It only seems silly. But there's no harm in it. Oh, please, Hattie, please. But why? It's difficult to explain. 
But I want you to promise on your honour to keep them in that secret place. It is still secret, isn't it? You're the only person I've ever told. I don't understand, but all right, I promise. On my honour. Thank you. I have to go now. Oh, Tom, wait! That promise means I should have to leave the skates behind altogether if I went away from here. I have to go back and see if it's worse. But Tom! Lavatory. All right, dear. Good night. This is the end of side three. 